So if you have lived in North Texas for at least one summer, congratulations. <laughs> you are no stranger to extreme heat. You know how that goes. Chief Meteorologist Scott Paget, digging into what's causing our summers to get warmer and warmer, Scott. I think it's a question a lot of people have. Yeah, and there are a lot of different factors uh, that go into the extreme heat that we've been seeing. And you know what? As we take a look at just this past summer, we had the fourth uh, amount of 100 degree days at 55. Uh, the most we've ever seen is 71 back in 2011. So of the 55 that we saw, 21 were consecutive. And uh, this summer ranked the third hottest on record with the fall season ranking the fourth. And as I said, while there are many contributing factors to increase in temperatures, the lack of an, ex of an extensive prairie land could be one of the bigger factors. The Great Plains stretch from western Canada south through the Dakotas, Kansas, Nebraska, and parts of Oklahoma and Texas. Of the original 20 million acres of tall grass prairie that used to exist in the Lone Star State, less than 1% remain today, according to TexasPrairies.org. The prairie soils have been instrumental in our nation's agricultural success, but it has also been its downfall. Not very many people eat grass, so the, the natural product of the prairie was not of interest for agriculture. And we uh, ended up basically um, plowing up um, large portions of the prairie in, in order to plant crops. In addition to tall grasses, flowering plants also make up native prairies. Their roots are deep and a natural source to reduce carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And as long as what um, you know, the, the dead plant material is able to accumulate in the soil and and the soil gradually builds up. You're able to then sequester that carbon and keep it uh, locked up. But is it enough? This summer was the third hottest summer on record here in North Texas with an average high temperature of 88.7 degrees. This summer's heat wave sent the prairie land into an early dormancy, which means they're drying out earlier than usual. A direct link to climate change and a warming planet, according to Patrick Newman, the CEO of the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. We're seeing the, the USDA hardiness zones are sort of migrating north, right? Um, that was a, a, a kind of a metric that we use in the gardening world for, for everything that we do, right? I mean. We plant things based on how we think they will perform um, in this particular climactic zone, if you will. But those zones seem to be shifting north and have been for a number of years. Um, we're also seeing these, these pendulum swings in intensity, right? We're seeing um, freezes that are coming, you know, these once in a lifetime freezes are happening frequently. And we're seeing long droughts. And when the rain returns, it isn't days and days of gentle rain but it is a deluge and a downpour. Um, and frankly, the, the plant world can respond, um, but it responds better to a sort of homeostatic and sort of normal cycle. But he says the biggest impact on the prairie is from urbanization. These prairies, whether they are restored prairies, intact prairies, reconstructed prairies, we're seeing them sort of become less and less of the equation. And what we are advocating for and we want to see is they should be a part of the overall equation, right? That we can develop smartly, and as we develop, we also want to be thinking about conserving, preserving open spaces. We're still experiencing extreme drought in parts of North Texas. In fact, this summer was the fourth driest on record. We need rain, but without a well-established prairie, much of that rain doesn't get absorbed into the ground. One distinctive aspect of the prairie was that it, you, you had it supporting soils which could absorb lots of rainfall and then you had um, deep root systems in the grasses that could then draw water up from from deep within the soil and what that does is it basically mellows out the hydrologic cycle and uh, you you either have to devote large portions of the land to flood control or be uh, dealing with lots of flood damage when it when it rains heavily Less rain leads to an increase in drought conditions and in turn an increased fire risk. According to the Texas A&M Forest Service, more than 12,000 grass fires occurred in 2022, burning more than 650,000 acres. Fires that many may think are devastating, but to the prairie land, that isn't the case. The truth of the matter is fire is incredibly beneficial, particularly to prairies. Um, and it, it burns out invasives, it helps to open up and reset the seed bank. It's a natural part of the process. And we're learning more and more that prescribed fire is a key 
maintenance strategy for these spaces. Fire is just one of the long-term management methods of prairie restoration. Grazing, mowing, and haying are also used to maintain floral diversity, remove woody or invasive species, and reduce weed growth. Efforts are also being made to restore the prairie land by planting seeds in areas that had been changed to other land use in hopes of increasing this natural resource to preserve groundwater and store carbon dioxide. Just a small piece in the effort to combat climate change and a warming planet. So a lot going into why we might be warmer here in North Texas and uh, different solutions that we could come up with as well.